What's up? Class is in session, okay? Because today I am going to give you some of my best financial tips. Get a pen and paper, we're gonna have some things to jot down. It's about to get real grown up in here, okay? I am trying to get a million subscribers by the end of this year. So hook your girl up, press the subscribe button, make sure you tell your cousin, your auntie, your sister, and your home girl to also subscribe. All right, so this is what we're gonna talk about. As I've gotten older, I've really become invested, but I'm bump, you get that I'm using a financial term, in my finances. And I really want to not just make money, but I really wanted to start learning how to invest my money, how to save my money, and every year really set a goal for myself so that I'm making sure that I'm not overspending. We've heard so many E! True Hollywood stories about people who've made millions and have lost all their money or just weren't aware of what was happening with their money, what was being spent. Child, I'm not trying to be that person. So, I have learned some really awesome tips and starting with really recognizing what your overhead is. You might be saying like, what the heck is overhead? What's over my head? We don't know, hey? Okay. Your overhead expenses are everything that you actually need in order to live, i.e. rent, like making sure that you have a roof over your head. I need to be able to pay a mortgage. How much does that cost? Write that down. If you're renting, write that down. That to me is like the most important thing. The next thing would be gas, electricity, water. If you pay that, add whatever that is. Then the next thing would be if you are a car owner. I am not a car owner. I don't have a license, we already know that part. If you do, how much is your car payment? The next thing would be, how much do you spend in gas? In my case, I put Uber or Lyft or whatever you use. Now the next thing would be groceries or eating out. How much do you think you spend a month in making sure that you eat? How much do you need? This is not what you want, this is how much do you need. There is a difference, we all have needs, and then we all have wants. We're not talking about like, oh, I really wanna go out to these fancy restaurants with my girlfriends, I have to include in that, you know, my shopping spree. That is not your overhead needs. This is just the basics, what you actually need to survive. What else do you need to survive? Health insurance. Oh, health insurance. If you have health insurance, make sure that you're paying that as well. That would be a part of your overhead. Guys, pitch in. This is a classroom activity, I like, Group effort, this is a group effort. What else would you need in your overhead that you really need to consider? Okay, that's a great one, reoccurring expenses. So let's say your reoccurring expenses are a gym, a gym membership. If that's a membership that you have to pay monthly because you're already in a contract for, absolutely pay your gym membership. Your cell phone, absolutely, you gotta add your cell phone onto there. Everybody has a cell phone, you need that. Pets. What else? Need is that a need, you need to have pets? I already have them. If you already have pets, nobody is telling you go out and decide you wanna buy a dog that is thousands and thousands of dollars. If you have pets and they're already here and alive, we would like to keep them alive, put their costs in there as well. Okay, so that's everything that you need. Get your little calculator out, I've got the app on my phone, add that number up, okay? That is what you are going to have to, that is for survival, this is what you have to make a month in order to survive. Now the question comes in, am I making that much money a month in order to survive? Um, and this is real talk, if you're not, and I've been there where I absolutely have added this number up and been like, I don't know how I'm gonna survive. I don't know where I'm gonna get this money from. I don't know how. And that's when you gotta get innovative, whether that is, I'm a super hardworking person and I have absolutely always believed that where there's a will, there's a way and there is never too, a job too big or too small that I wouldn't take in order to make sure that I can reach my overhead. Lana and I sit down and we have these conversations. We sit down and we put these numbers together and we're like, okay, this is what I need to make every single month in order to reach my goals and to manage my money. My mother gets involved in it and I love that because if you think I'm frugal Fran, oh child, she is frugal Francesca. She is the whole thing, she is next level. My mom actually watches my finances. I need somebody to be a voice of reason. And even though sometimes she's excessive and slightly extreme, there have been times where like I buy a pair of jeans for $150, it goes through, it alerts her that I spent money. She literally will call me and be like, mamita, but, but what were you getting for $150? Mom, I bought a pair of jeans. <gasps> 
Old Navy has jeans for $14. What do you need jeans for $150? That is, is that necessary, mamita? Like, you have goals. So the next thing I am going to is figuring out what your goals are. If you want to be a person that is literally living month to month on your overhead expenses, then you can say, okay, I don't need a second job. Maybe you're gonna look at these numbers and say, oh, I definitely need a job because I wanna put money away for saving. I have goals that I have in mind. I either wanna purchase a home, I wanna buy a car, I want to take an extravagant trip, I wanna travel the world, I wanna go see Europe. Whatever your goals are, put that number in there and make that your goal for the year. We have a goal, like me, my mom, Lana, Israel, we have a goal. So we are very specific about, well, if you do this, Adrian, if you decide to take this trip and spend this money, then you won't reach your goal. And that really puts things in perspective for me. So when my mom calls me and is like, girl, you have a goal, you didn't need those $150 jeans, I literally am like, you're right, I, I really did not need that. I did not need to go out for dinner. It's like, it's just not necessary. I could have made a great romantic dinner for my husband at home. Eating out is one of the major ways that people actually end up spending so much money. We don't realize that every time we go grab Starbucks, coffee, it is expensive and that adds up. Packing your own lunch. Not only will that help you on the fitness and health tip because you actually know what is going into your food, um, it really will save you so much money. Another fun thing to become a part of is looking up tips and tricks on the internet uh, of becoming your own barista and creating your own amazing craft coffee cocktails and taking that with you to work versus going to a Starbucks because those expensive coffees really can add up. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, I'm struggling, now I can't even have my Starbucks to help fuel me or the little things that you like. So I think it's super important to reward yourself. Every time that you don't spend that money at the fancy coffee shop or that you don't go to like a fancy restaurant, you wanna feel rewarded. The reward should be that whatever you were gonna spend on that coffee or on that meal, you now put towards your goal. Watching that number go up should be the reward. You're watching yourself get one step closer to your goal. And trust me, you will thank yourself for it later. I love that quote that says, do something today that your self will thank you for later. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. And I love that because there are moments when I struggle, like trust me, there are things I wanna do or vacations I wanna take or, and I'm just like, is that worth it? It's important to also have really great conversations with yourself and recognize why you're choosing those goals and why you wanna spend that money. Is it genuinely because it's something you wanna do? Is it for the gram? Is it for, you know, for social reasons? Is it because you want that skirt because somebody has it and you really like that look? I mean, there's so many things that go into why we spend money the way we do. And I just think it's super important to have those real honest conversations with yourself so that ultimately you really can reach the goals that you have in mind. Someone once told me, they're like, do you know how why the rich stay rich? Because they act like they're poor. And I was like, wait, what does that mean? Like, rich people, people that actually have money, do not spend frivolously. Do you know why? Because number one, that's how they got rich. And number two, that's how they'll stay rich. And that's where I really started figuring out about, okay, well, how does this work? And I was really grateful that Lana put me on to a few really cool tips. Trust me when I tell you, I started sticking to what I'm telling you, the tips that I'm telling you, the 50, 30, 20 rule, and it changed my life. 50% of your money should go towards the fixed things in your life, like the overhead, the things that we know are recurring, cell phone, rent, like we just talked about, car, insurance, all of that. 30% of that is gonna go to the finances that you have that are not fixed, that change from month to month. Clothing, things that you might wanna buy for yourself, you know, it's your daughter's birthday, it's Christmas, it's the holidays, those sorts of things. That's what 30% of your income is gonna go to. And then you have 20% of your income that should go to savings. I'm saying all of this, and I know you're probably looking at me like, girl, you do not have to be on a budget. You've got all these things. I was broke. I worked really hard in my life and I spent all of my money. If you actually 
follow this plan, I, I really do believe that for the most part, so many of you guys will be able to achieve your goals. It takes so much self-discipline. I know a lot of us are like, well, my life is crappy. Things aren't working out for me. And so sometimes you really are like, buying this little thing would give me an instant gratification or instant joy that would make me feel better. You've got to stop thinking short term and you've got to think long term for your life. What are the, what's the bigger picture? And yeah, I might be sad and a little upset for right now that I don't have these certain things, but if I work really hard and I have self-discipline, when I look up years from now, I will be so grateful that I stuck to my plan and I stuck to my goal. Trust me, it is going to make a difference. Next thing that is a major, major game changer in your finances is having good credit. You know it's important if Jay-Z's even rapping about it. Now, growing up, again, I, I'm telling you that being informed and being educated in certain areas is super duper important. Till this day, I am an advocate for schools. Actually, instead of teaching us things that we will never use, people need to actually learn about finances. It, it should be a required thing. It should be mandatory that you learn about how to build credit, how to keep your credit score great. Guys, Trust me when I tell you, when you don't have the knowledge on these things, it really will affect you. Sadly, growing up, I wasn't taught this. My own family, we didn't know how to budget. I actually was told to never get a credit card growing up. Like it was like, pay for everything in cash, then you won't get in trouble. And that actually was what hurt my credit the most, was actually not having any established credit at all. So some of us may be wondering, oh my God, but like when you come straight out of college, you don't wanna get a credit card and spend it. No, again, it comes back to self-discipline. Everyone should absolutely have a credit card because that is how you are going to build your credit. Now, what you do with that credit card is extremely important. The things you should put on your credit card are things that are recurring, that every single month they know that you pay. Your gas, water bill, um, you can put your cell phone bill. That is something that's every single month that can come straight out of your credit card and that you can pay back. Paying back on time is extremely important. Don't have late payments that will ruin your credit. Okay, the whole concept is they need to be able to see that they can lend you money and that you'll actually pay it back and pay it back on time with interest. So that that's how this game is played in simple terms. And if you don't have good credit, I have got to share a book that I read that completely was life-changing. Literally me and Lana sat down and we were like, um, this is going to change our life. There's so much information in the book. It's by my guy Malik, who has literally, he's like the credit doctor. The book is called Break the Chains and Guys, there's so much information in that book. I don't think we realize how much time like things like Instagram take up our time or social media. And there's so many of those things that are not gonna benefit you and help you in your life long term. Put set aside time every single day. Lana literally looks at me and she's like, do you wanna scroll Instagram and watch other people make money? Or do you wanna put your time into making money for yourself? Life changing. Put time aside that you spend an hour a day reading something that is actually going to help you. We read Forbes every single day. That's like our goal. That's like and now as a business owner, I wanna make sure that I'm knowledgeable. So every single morning, Lana sends me an article from Forbes magazine, Forbes entrepreneur leadership articles. So instead of being on Instagram, scrolling and watching everybody else be an entrepreneur and making tons of money and their amazing vacations in Capri, Italy and Positano, instead of spending an extra hour doing that, I sit and I read things that are gonna help me get information so that I can make my company flourish, so I can make my money matter. And that's what I'm talking about. Cut that time out put timers on your phone for social media, take an hour a day and read a book like Break the Chain, or there's so many other amazing rich dad, poor dad. Like there's so many incredible books that you can read about finances that'll be so much more helpful to you than just watching other people's lives, you know, flourish and watch them become financially wealthy. You can take it into your own hands and make things happen. So I just, I hope that I inspired you, encouraged you, got you focused today. See, this isn't just flighty about talking about pretty makeup or like, you know, I have or I have never. I want you guys to say, I have money. I want you all to say, I have never gone broke. That's what this is about. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. Again, help me reach my goal of reaching 1 million followers by the end of this year. Hook your girl up and tap that subscribe button. I love you guys.